Hi there everyone and welcome back to Boat McGrill. Well, today we are up at my friend Anders' boat, Diana, and uh, we ha have some problems with a MD70C in Volvo Penta that needs to be taken care of. The start of all this was last fall. Uh, he was going to bring his boat up to his uh, winter place and on the route out there something happened. Uh, he heard a bang in the engine and it just stalled. Uh, later on showed that uh, uh, the valve spring had broken and the valve had fallen down into the third cylinder uh, got bent in there destroyed the piston so we have uh, quite a bit of work to take care of so come on let's get inside of the boat and uh, yeah we'll take care of it Right here you can see the MD70C. One of the heads are removed. There's quite a bit of soot and other debris in that cylinder. That's cylinder number three where the accident happened, where the valve jumped down. What you can see Anders doing right here is he is removing the exhaust connection to the cylinders. On the MD70C there is coolant water going through this. That makes sure that the cooling system in the cylinders are water filled during when the engine is running. And then it takes back out to the sea. This engine is actually uh, a freshwater cooled version. On Anders' right side you can see the, uh, the heat exchanger. Here you see Anders removing some of the bolts that holds the lifting eyes for the engine to be able to lift it out. They are also connected to the bolts that holds the cylinder. Here you can see Anders remove the valve caps. Under there you have the uh, lifters for the uh, valves. Here you see the caps removed and the gasket. And here you have the lifters. Anders is now re removing the oil pipe for the lifters. It brings oil up from the engine block through a pipe to the lifters to make sure that there's always a lubricant. There's a bolt with two metal O-rings that needs to be removed. Since the oil pipe is a hard metal pipe, it needs to be bent a little bit otherwise you can't remove the cylinder head or the cylinder. Just make sure to be careful. There is a possibility to break this. Here you can see Anders removing the two bolts that holds the lifters for the valves. I think it's a 13 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. So you need two different wrenches here. And here you remove the lifting assembly. Now we are losing the bolts that holds the cylinder head and the cylinder to the engine block. Since this is uh, tightened with 110 newton meters, uh, it's quite heavy to even to lose the bolts too. As you can see, Anders have to use quite a bit of force. We're talking quite a bit of Swedish here because this was a work that took us about 8-10 hours to do. Here you can see Anders, uh, he is lifting the cylinder head. And there is a cylinder head gasket. And now we are lifting the first, or actually the third cylinder. That's the cylinder where the accident with the bent valve was happening. You have to wiggle it a bit back and forth to get it out of there. 
but after a little while you get it loose and can bring it up. In those cylinders there is uh, channels for coolant water and there's usually always some water still in there so try to not wiggle it too much the water starts to run out and get down into the engine block. As you can see you have a the oil pipe right there and that can be a little bit tricky to get that out. If you find out that it's not back, bent back enough you can actually unscrew the pipe. It's screwed to the engine block under the uh, cylinder. Here you can see me putting on uh, the new piston rings onto the new piston that's gonna be mounted in this. It's kind of tricky to get it in there, but with a little screwdriver and a plier, and be careful, you will get it in there in the grooves. Unfortunately, we couldn't get this on film, but to remove the pin that holds the piston, you have to use heat. You have to heat it up, and then the same thing with the old piston. Here we have heated up the new piston quite a bit. It's kind of hot to work with, and it wasn't very easy to get this done while the uh, piston was still in the engine. Here we're actually preparing for putting the cylinder back in place. I'm using a metal sheet with some zip ties around it to push the piston rings in so you can get the piston into the cylinder. Unfortunately, we didn't get all of this on film either. Sorry about that, but a little bit of it. Here you have the cylinder and you have to make sure to get that oil pipe back in place. And then you push the cylinder over. And at the same time, the metal sheet that I put around the piston will slide down while the piston rings getting into the cylinder. The last thing you do is to nip off the zip ties and remove the sheet. Here you have the first cylinder head put back on. It can be a little bit tricky to get all of these rods and stuff in place but you can also see that uh, Anders actually had changed out the valve springs they are yellow now instead of black because they were new uh, unfortunately we didn't get this on video that might be for another time here we finger tights the bolts if you read the manual for this how to do this they said just tight it slightly not too hard you're supposed to be able to wiggle around the cylinders and the cylinder heads so when you put back the exhaust all of that will line up here we put some gasket cement on the gaskets just to make sure that it's that you get a good connection between the cylinder and the cylinder head Cylinder head number two coming on. Same thing here, you just finger tight the bolt. You're not supposed to tighten them up at this point. And then you have the third cylinder coming in there. This is actually what we're gonna show for this week. In the next week's episode, we will do the rest of this work. Uh, you can see how when we put back the exhaust, 
we put back the lifters we are setting the clearance for the lifters on the valves so make sure to check out next week's episode where we keep on the restoration of this md70c take care everyone uh, see you out there and have a nice week bye everyone Thank you.